Good morning, everyone. We'll begin with our gathering song, 347, Gather the Spirit. to UCD since 2005, and we signed the membership book in 2007. Um, I have um, two daughters, Gabby is behind me at 19, and Zoe's 22 now, but came um, from very, very little. And uh, most of my volunteering here has been through RE and um, uh, um, being a member of the um, REMT. Um, which I just left last um, last year. Um, it's good to be back. Uh, since April, I've been doing Sunday morning yoga classes for my friends outside. So we made it through October. Um, so that was wonderful, but I'm happy to, to be back here with all of you and doing the welcome. Um, my daughter, um, I picked up yesterday from Clark University, which is a small, um, small liberal arts, progressive liberal arts school in Worcester, Massachusetts, and she luckily got through the semester. She'll be with us for three months. Um, she goes back at the end of February, um, which is um, a month later than she would normally do it, and then they're pushing everything out till June. So Clark is trying to think ahead a little bit, but um, we were happy to have her home, but really happy she made it through the semester. So, um, so, uh, so we welcome um, to the online service of the Unitarian Universities Congregation of Danbury. We're so glad that each of you are able to join us this morning and together in community 
to ensure that all social distancing does not mean social disengagement. Our weekly service are more than just a gathering for our physical bodies. It is the formal, it is forming of a sacred time that we make together. Whether you are well versed in the technology of teleconferencing for this, or it's your first venture, we welcome you. For those of you, for those of you new to Among Us reconnecting <clears throat> with fonder hearts, we invite you to introduce yourselves and where you are connecting from in the chat box if you are comfortable. Whatever the faith and traditions of your past, whatever your theological stance, whatever your heritage, whoever you are and whomever you love, we welcome you. We can learn <clears throat> more about, you can learn more about, about us on, your, on our website and Facebook page. We encourage you to share our Facebook page and reach out to others who may be isolated at this time and might benefit from our spiritual connection with our loving community. Um, we will, um, so uh, the religious education um, uh, uh, director would like for you to know that um, we will, that she has, um, sorry, I thought the announcement, I thought the announcements, thank you so much. Um, I didn't have it in front of me. Um, so the religious education children and youth are invited to make reading cards for the caring circle. Blank cards are available for pickup at UUCD. Families, please see your email for details. Um, don't forget to save the date for the online option, November 29th through December 5th, and the spectacular on December 6th, 2020 at 5 p.m. Well, there will be 90 minutes of door prizes, live entertainment to raffle drawings and live auction. So looking forward to all of that. And then calling all you CD visual artists, hopefully the one sitting behind me will do this. Um, uh, if you're a visual artist and would like to share some of your artwork with us, um, we're looking for holiday and winter themed um, images to include for the UCD Zoom holiday concert that's on December 20th at three o'clock. So please email that artwork to Jerry um, by December 8th, 2020. Um, so welcome our online guidelines. We will mute your line in order to optimize audio from the speakers. Webcams, you may select speaker view or gallery view to change the webcam view located in either the top right corner of your screen or above the window frame. You may need to scroll through the many webcam tiles to see your friends or even speakers. At times we will have text like this on the screen, at other times just the video panes. Chat to you congregation of Danbury privately if you have any questions or technical issues. Please minimize the chat if you are finding it distracting. So again, welcome, we're so happy you're here. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see your faces and your names. What a complex Sunday I've been feeling like this is as it approaches. I am glad to be with you this morning as we open our hearts to each other and listen for and strive to hold all the many thoughts and feelings that exist among us in this spacious Zoom room without walls. I am mindful this morning of the commitment of our Unitarian Universalist denominational body to look honestly at the complexity of the Thanksgiving mythology in this country. All those of us zooming in from somewhere in Connecticut or Eastern New York, we are on land inhabited once and still by Poquanook, Pogasset, Quinnipiac, and Wappinger Indigenous peoples, among others. It is crucial that we continue to learn about and acknowledge the genocide that ancestors of some of us here were a part of and the continued presence and voice of Indigenous people in this region. This particular year, this Thanksgiving week ahead, we also experience the disruption of many of our usual routines. We continue to live into the deep grief of this year, holding in love those who have died and who we mourn without being able to gather together in person in the ways we long to do. We carry on with all our day-to-day -day tasks while not knowing what the near future may look like. We strive to keep learning and growing in our understanding of what it means to be an interconnected human community. 
and we attempt to stay in touch with all that we have to be grateful for. And that is a lot. That is a lot to hold. Be gentle with yourselves and each other as we continue to strive in all of these efforts together. Come, let us join in this sacred time for regrounding, remembering, reflecting, and reconnecting this morning. Join me now in bringing a chalice or a candle near to you. Kindle this light that we share and that symbolizes the enduring strength of our Unitarian Universalist faith. Take a moment to light your chalice and then join me in our chalice lighting words. Love is the spirit of this congregation and justice is its light. This is our covenant to dwell together in peace to seek and speak the truth in love, to help one another and celebrate life. I love seeing all the different lights. We'll now go right at Sierra Marie has the day Sunday off today, which is a wonderful thing. So you will stay with me right into the children's affirmation. So I invite you to bring up your yous along with any children and youth near or far with you. We are Unitarian Universalists. We are people with open minds, with loving hearts, and with helping hands. I know that one of the things that my family is, well, at least the adults in my family are particularly sad about is Sunday morning, not bringing our children to church. Um, and instead, because this is a two preacher household, um, two sets of preacher's kids, they, um, they, they see this as TV time. So they're like, woohoo, we get to watch TV. We don't ever want to go back to church, which breaks my heart a little bit, right? We'll work on that when the time comes. But that is one of the things I'm feeling sad about this morning. I wanted to share a few ways that we've found to remind ourselves to be grateful here in the Ryan Star home. Ways to kindle our gratefulness around the house as families. Our, this is one of them, our family joy jar. So this one that you're seeing on the screen is a couple years ago. We, I try to get us all to put joys in the joy jar and sometimes it's really not very many over the course of the whole year, but they add up you know, bit by bit, taking a little post-it or a card and putting it in the joy jar whenever we think of it. And then on New Year's Eve, we take out all the joys from the past year. So that's what you're seeing there in that picture is, is all the joys from 2018 that was. And it's amazing to see eating pizza on the bottom there. It's amazing the things that we don't remember, you know, even just a few months after they occurred. So it's a fun way to remember some of the highlights of the year together. We also have started lately um, because I've learned that no ritual lasts forever, right? We all have to keep uh, re-energizing. What, okay, which ones are we letting go of or I just haven't stuck and which ones do we want to add back in? So this year we've added in what our younger child is doing in daycare nursery school, which is wows and pows at the dinner table. So at the dinner table, we each share a wow and a pow from our day. And even our three, three and a half year old totally gets it and is like, my wow is that I don't have anything bad to share. I don't have a pow. My wow is that I don't have a pow is often her wow. Um, so that's super sweet. A tool that a colleague of mine created is something that Sierra Marie invited all our UUCD families to use this year. And we'll share it with you in the chat as well. It's a Google Doc. It's a little clunky, but it is a link to a Google Doc that you too can share with your family near and far or friends or whoever you want to share it with, where you can each go in and click on a leaf and write in a leaf something you're grateful for, and then pull the leaves onto the tree and you can print that out or just know that you each contributed to it. This is one UUCD family's tree that they created through this Google Doc. So it's fun finding ways to do some of the interactive things we might do in person um, online. And so there's a tool for you as well. 
This is also a crucial time to live out our Unitarian Universalist commitment to not perpetuate hurtful stereotypes. And if you want, you can look at the 2016 um, statement of conscience or statement from the Unitarian Universalist Association specifically about rethinking Thanksgiving. You can Google that. Um, be mindful of what images and caricatures you are passing along, even which recipes you choose to make and why. Or for me, it's even included which chocolates I buy. Did not buy the pilgrim hats at the chocolate store. Um, you know, how can we encourage the kinds of stories we want to share with in the future with ourselves and future generations? It is important to notice and be especially intentional about images of Native Americans and indigenous people at this time in our country and to share stories that have for far too long been suppressed. So in this spirit of all these things, gratitude, grief, learning, acknowledging and persevering, I share with you today this Canadian board book for children that is dedicated to former Indian residential school students, a population in people of, of people in Canada that I urge you to look up and read more about if you are not familiar. We also had Indian residential schools in the United States, but this particular book is made by and printed for um, survivors of the Indian uh, Canadian residential school students. Even in times of great grief, trauma, sorrow, and struggle, we can turn to each other and support each other in finding nuggets of happiness more precious than gold. And this is all distilled in this book, I feel. My Heart Fills with Happiness by Monique Gray Smith with illustrations by Julie Flett. My heart fills with happiness when I see the face of someone I love. My heart fills with happiness when I smell when I smell bannock baking in the oven, which I've looked up a recipe for this year. I've never made bannock before, but it's apparently a traditional food of many different indigenous tribes and something you could consider looking at. My heart fills with happiness when I sing when I walk barefoot on the grass, when I dance. My heart fills with happiness when I hold the hand of someone I love, when I listen to stories, when I drum. What fills your heart with happiness? With that question lingering in your hearts, I invite you to share during our time of shared milestones, those things that are lifting up your heart or weighing it down this morning. Please share in the chat your spoken milestones while Jerry plays music for us.
This is a reading by Unitarian Universalist Julie Fancelo. It's called Day Zero. Soon after my sweetheart was scheduled for a stem cell transplant, we realized it would take place the morning after the 2016 election. Day Zero is the nickname transplant patients use to mark the way the procedure resets the immune system. And it seemed especially apt in 2016 as we looked forward to the end of a contentious presidential campaign. On election night, aware that Tom would be homebound for several months, we went out on a date. As we held hands and bathed in the glow of Barry Jenkins' beautiful movie, Moonlight, all was well. Love seemed ascendant in America, and Tom would have a new lease on life the next morning. I knew something was amiss when we left the theater. Several people were crying outside a nearby bar, and on the TVs flickering through the windows, I could see the reason for their despair. The election was not going as many of us expected. The next morning, after sleeping badly for a few hours, I woke Tom for our appointment with the transplantation team. It was a surreal morning for everyone, but it was also a relief to have something to take our minds off the news, at least for a few hours. For Tom, this was the first day of the rest of his life, however long that might be. We still had that fact to celebrate. The new stem cells gave Tom about 15 months of remission before the cancer came back in early 2018. He died in June of that year, 11 days after we married on his 62nd birthday, our family crowding into the hospital room to wish us well. I miss Tom every day, Julie Fancelo con concludes. I miss Tom every day, writes Julie. Though I am grateful his medical odyssey didn't happen amid COVID-19, when our family couldn't have cheered his wedding day, when his children and their mother wouldn't have been able to visit on his last night, when I wouldn't have been able to hold him close in his last hours. Love carried us through that hard night. And as uncertain as the world feels right now, love will bear whatever lies ahead. Love carried us through that hard night. And as uncertain as the world feels right now, love will bear whatever lies ahead. Margaret Thatcher on TV Shocked by the deaths that took place in Beijing Seems strange that she should be offended The same orders were given by her I've said this before now You said I was childish and you'll say it now remember what i told you they hated me they will hate you england's not the mythical land madam george and roses it's the home of police who kill black boys on mopeds and i love my boy that's why I'm leaving. I don't want him to be aware that there's anything such as grieving. Young mother down at Smithfield, 5 a.m. looking for food for her kids. In her arms, she holds three cold babies. And the first word that they learned was please. These 
These are dangerous days To say what you feel Is to dig your own grave Remember what I told you If you were of the world They would love you England's not the mythical land Madam George and Roses is the home of police who kill black boys on mopeds. And I love my boy, and that's why I'm leaving. I don't want him to be aware that there's any such thing as grieving. Thank you so much, Jerry. And I do realize now, thanks to our team, that I went right past the offering. But I want to build on Jerry sharing that beautiful song with us. So we will do the offering and the offertory after we sing Spirit of Life together. So I was hearing from multiple directions earlier this week about a show that apparently a lot of people are watching, maybe some of you. In the painful exacerbating of extremes that is this COVID-19 pandemic, I have as a parent of young children even less time for keeping up with pop culture than I did pre-pandemic. But I do understand that some among you have more time on your hands. And so maybe you too have been watching or catching up with this show I've been hearing about. I guess it's called The Crown. I gather that it's actually been around for a while, but maybe my ears perked up more when I heard that Gillian Anderson of X-Files fame from my pre-parenting days when I did have more time for watching TV has come onto the show this season as Margaret Thatcher. Just that, hearing the words, Margaret Thatcher on TV is all it takes for me to get the 1990 song by Sinead O'Connor that Jerry just sang for us imprinted in my brain. It has been in my head and on the tip of my tongue all week now. I've been humming it. It's kind of a complicated song to be singing in front of your eight-year-old and three-year-old. You know, there have been times where I'm like, hmm. This is the song that's just really been in my head and heart this week. And I've come to think about how it's the perfect song for this year and for our country now, 30 years after it was written. It's 161 words and it's tune of lament, hold the heartbreak of racism and racist government, parenting and grief all inside it. And it's the longing to escape grief that lingers with me. She sings, I love my boy and that's why I'm leaving. I don't want him to be aware that there's any such thing as grieving. But there is no way for any of us now to cross international lines and somehow by doing that, get free of grieving. And there is so much to grieve, right? We are grieving the canceling of family traditions cherished for decades, grieving the deaths of beloveds who we haven't been able to fully and properly mourn, Grieving the passing of a summer in which so many of our usual summer activities were out of the question. And now for sometimes, for me anyway, sometimes for me it's hard to even believe like, right, we did go through July and August and September, but they were so different from usual summers for many of us. Grieving the growing up of grandchildren we aren't getting to spend as much time with as we'd like and grandparents who are aging too fast, stop that, and whose health was already fragile pre-COVID. We are grieving the absence of hockey games, baseball games, swim and gymnastics meets, meeting with friends casually at a bar, 
beloved dinner parties, going to the theater, the opera, the movies, a show, an indoor yoga class, Allison reminded me of. I remember those still. Oh, I could go on and on and on. You probably could as well. And I ask you not to minimize your or your loved one's senses of loss. We all have different things that really hit home for us that we're missing this year. It's all real. It's all painful, even if it may seem or we may try to laugh it off as only a luxury problem. Of course, for a great many people in this country, there has always been grieving. Thanksgiving itself, which many of us look forward to this week, has been called for years by some of my peers and colleagues, thanks grieving. Because what it really reminds us of is the genocide of Native Americans that is just one of the violent and horrifying parts of this nation's history. In Plymouth, Massachusetts, indigenous people spend Thanksgiving as a day of mourning, gathering at Coles Hill in Plymouth, Massachusetts at noon on Thursday, which will still happen this year. This year will mark the 50th anniversary of this day of mourning tradition and the 400th anniversary of the landing of the pilgrims in Plymouth. Participants in the National Day of Mourning honor Native ancestors and the struggles of Native peoples to survive today. It is a day of remembrance and spiritual connection, as well as a protest of the racism and oppression which Native Americans continue to experience. UUA President Reverend Susan Frederick Gray reminds us all that in 2016, Unitarian Universalists voted to pay special attention to learning more of our history and rethinking Thanksgiving. Historically, UU ministers were instrumental in creating this US holiday and the pilgrims and the Indians pageant tradition that roots the holiday in a historically inaccurate and harmful colonial narrative. Many UU congregations in New England can trace their lineage directly back to early settler congregations that had a role in the genocide of Native communities. As a religious tradition, Reverend Susan Frederick Gray shared in an incredible um, service this weekend that I'll try to share with you all in the This Week This Week. We cannot decide who we will be as a religious tradition, we cannot decide who we will be without reckoning with the truth of who some of our ancestors were. It is our work to examine and debunk the Thanksgiving myth. I realized another reason that the Sinead song kept rising up in me this week is because in the chorus, she also calls out her country's mythology. England's not the mythical land of Madame George and Roses. It's the home of police who kill black boys on mopeds. We could write our own version of these words about the United States, the mythology this country is founded on, and the way the truth keeps announcing its presence, demanding to be heard and told. Racism is alive and well in this country and has been perpetuated and protected for centuries. How can we do our part to acknowledge, address and change this other enduring virus for which there seems to be no vaccine? The pandemic is forcing us to rethink all our Thanksgiving routines. And so I'm trying to see it also as an opportunity to rethink what has long needed reconsidering anyway, which is the whole story of Thanksgiving in this country. So in some ways, this pandemic is allowing many of us a sense of restart, of reset. How can we integrate all that has become more clear, more stark in our country this year? Wampanoag artist and activist Hartman Dietz called out to Unitarians and Universalists and others in this past Friday's Harvest the Power Convergence and Teach-In to understand that indig in, in 
in indigenous traditions, gratitude has never been a one way experience. It has never been and should not be about taking, taking, taking and being grateful for being able to take and receive. Dietz explained that in indigenous and Native American traditions that long preceded white colonial settlers on this land, expressing thankfulness included recognizing the need to give back, to return the kindness, to always be working to bring about a balanced exchange, whether with other people or with the earth itself. This year, I invite you to join me in letting ourselves feel the grief, feel all the grief that we can hold and allowing it to bring us through to an active gratitude, a returning of the blessings that uphold our lives. You might do this by making contributions to organizations like UU Ministry for Earth, which is actively involved in lifting up indigenous voices and partnering with native First Nations and indigenous peoples for earth justice and climate justice. There are so many ways you can volunteer in person and online and offer your support. I love that Connecticut Magazine's December issue is filled with thoughts, suggestions, and inspiration for ways that you can give back. So press on past the ads for million dollar homes and find the ways that you can do whatever you can to make a difference for someone, especially for you by focusing on others, by letting the energy of an active gratitude energize you and bring you into connection with someone or some new organization in your life. Blogger Anne Helen Peterson writes about the dichotomies that the pandemic reifies. Our overarching division is between collectivism and individualism, between acting and thinking in ways that aim for the better collective good and acting and thinking in ways that aim to preserve the personal status quo. Collectivist, collectivist ethos means activating for solutions that will make life better for everyone, even if it means giving up some of your privilege. Individualist ethos means focusing first on your family's security and only then expanding that focus to others, but only the others you deem worthy. Collectivism means thinking about future generations and the world they will inherit. Individualism means thinking about your grandchildren and what they personally will inherit from you. So thinking about those two tensions, and I know I wrestle with aspects of individualism, we all do. We are encouraged to think individualistically in this country, but how can we all try to stretch and challenge our pu and push ourselves towards thinking more collectively? As we are all this year forced to rethink Thanksgiving, even if we hadn't yet in prior years, let this 2020 Thanksgiving be a time of both deep reflection and also creative connection. This is a great year to start some new tradition, to think about ways to practice and express gratitude throughout what may well feel like a very long winter. To think about for everything you have to be grateful for, a way that you are giving back and restoring balance to this wildly imbalanced world. Let the grief move through you and remind you as it does that none of us are autonomous individuals, that we all have moments of despair and that it is our connections with each other to those we know well and those we just barely know to those beloveds in our past and the new friends and lives we'll connect with in our tomorrows. It is all those cables of connection that carry us forward. Let us be and strive to become not collectors of things, but conduits of gratitude. Let the grief which we cannot help but feel move us into caring more earnestly for all that remains. 
Join me now in taking a deep breath together. Earlier, I read a reading by UU Julie Fancelo, which she wrote for the UUA online inspirational series, Braver Wiser. Every Braver Wiser piece concludes with a prayer, and this is Julie's prayer. Spirit of life, in this time of uncertainty, let us rest and get ready to lean all the way into the promise of a country that values and cares for everyone. For the sake of all our loved ones who are gone, those who are here and those yet to be born, we can't stop now. We won't stop now. May it be so. Join me now in singing along with Jerry, Spirit of Life. now time for our congregational offering. If you are with us for your first time, feel free to pass the virtual plate. Your presence here is, is, our gift, is your gift to us. Members, please express your generosity by clicking the link that's posted in the chat to make a donation or pledge. Even though we're not in our sacred space on the ridge, we're creating our holy place together and our operating expenses remain the same. You may also mail a check to UUCD at 24 Clapid, Clapboard Ridge Road in Danbury. Thank you for doing your part to support and sustain this community that we love. Thank you. 
We are now approaching the end of our service, unfortunately, and it's now time to extinguish our chalices. If you would please do so while we, while we offer the closing words for extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world until we are together again. We'll sing our closing hymn, 1010, We Give Thanks. And if you'll look at the words there, we're going to be singing Time, Faith, and World. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day. Gathered here and those far away for this time we share with love and care. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day for all gathered here. For those far away, for this faith we share with love and care. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day. For all gathered here and those far away. For this world we share with love and care. Oh, we give thanks for this precious day. Dear ones, thank you all for being here and creating this live sort of rehearsed, but always has something that reminds us that this is a live experience and we create it as we go together through our interaction and our participation and our support and our cheering on of one another. So thank you all for being a part of that. May you this week let the sadness we are all at times feeling remind us to cherish all the more what and who we still have, what and who remains for us to more deeply celebrate and care for. Savor the postlude with me, stretch as you need, and then join us for small group conversation during the fellowship time. When you do leave this incredible community today, may you go feeling held in love, committed to peace, and more determined than ever to continue in your and our efforts for greater justice for all in this world. Our post break, uh, our post service breakout groups, and we invite you to share, uh, reflect, and share the thoughts of our Sunday service. If there's someone in your group that you don't know very well, now is a perfect opportunity to spend some time with them.